So I was talking to a friend, and uh, we were talking about witnessing and sharing the faith of Jesus. And Mark Cahill, who's an evangelist, a uh, popular saying from him is, you know, the question is, how can I share the gospel with someone? If we believe that heaven and hell are the only ways, um, eternally speaking, then the question is not how can I, it's how can I not uh, share the gospel with someone? And the title of this video is Eight Weeks, and there's a reason why it's eight weeks. I, um, for for the longest time until just the recent uh, summer or two, um, will go on a summer trip called Elmfuge, Mission Fuge. Um, Mission Fuge, you can look it up. I don't want this video to be too lengthy, but basically uh, Mission Fuge host sites are all throughout the United States. You stay at college campuses, hundreds of kids from all over the states go to these different campuses. They're all going on simultaneously for about roughly eight weeks. Um, so it starts, I don't know, and maybe June goes through July until the first week of August, something like that. And because uh, the students, the youth or whatever, they're on summer break from school. And so the youth go, their chaperones go, the youth pastor goes and any adult volunteers go. And so I went as a youth and then went as a male chaperone, went as a youth pastor and then went as a speaker. And so I've, you know, kind of gone up the up the ladder, if you will. I've attended several in huge camps. Um, and I'm not saying this like, you know, look, you know, I've attended several in huge camps. Look, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. You know, I'm very familiar with Elmfuge, and, and I highly recommend the camp, actually. LifeWay does a great job with it. Um, if you've never been to Elmfuge or if you're a church youth group need to do something in the summer, it's it's great. So hundreds of kids go to a campus site, and then they go out in the community, and whether they're painting or construction or yard work, or maybe they're in games and rec, or maybe they're in social, um, and there, there's several different things that they can be doing. They're with children, they're, you know, with adults, elderly, um, they're uh, it just in the inner city parks, playing games, ministering, witnessing, whatever. Great camp. Highly recommend it. Love it. Um, but so we went to Charleston, West, uh, Charleston, South Carolina a couple years ago. And the first time I went there, I actually went as a youth. And then all of a sudden I came back as a, as a male chaperone. And it, it was amazing. Just awesome experience. But the, the Lord was working in my heart a lot. Um, and this is something I struggle with, and I think any believer out there can, if they're being honest with everyone, they can honestly say they struggle with it as well. And it's it's witnessing. So when I was at a youth going to these camps, I was going after girls. I was going to play basketball. I wasn't going to teach these kids about Jesus, right, because I didn't really even know who he was. I knew facts about him. I could say, yeah, he's your savior, but I didn't believe it. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know the weight of that statement even. Well, so at this camp, at these campuses, you get breakfast on the campus, like buffet style, like you would if you actually went to the university. Um, lunch, you eat on your site. Um, so out, you know, you just get a sandwich and applesauce or something. And then dinner, you get served at the campus as well, buffet style, pizza, hamburger, whatever you want. So uh, South Carolina is just where actually we went. Uh, but you know, we've been to St. Louis, Pennsylvania. So just imagine the big stuff, big deal happens all over the United States. Well, I'm standing in line, I'm getting my pizza, right? And uh, pizza in my Mountain Dew. And I was like, man, I was like, I see this woman come out, you know, and she, my, the pizza tray was empty. So she comes out, she brings out another piece of pizza. And then she's standing there. And as people are getting slices, she's like turning the pizza plates, right? And putting the little handle out for people to grab so it's accessible. And, you know, so she's doing all this. And I had seen her do that. And, you know, there's always someone doing that, right? At every campus because otherwise, you know, there's not going to be food there. So there's someone responsible for doing that. And then after all the food was gone, she's cleaning, she's sweeping, she's doing everything, right? And there's a couple different workers, but you, you get the point. There's one there and I'm not going to say her name in case she still works there. And then, you know, if someone sees us from Charleston, South Carolina, and you know, I don't want it to be uncomfortable at all. Um, but we're just going to call her, we're going to call her Anita. I just made up that name. That's not her name. Well, Anita, um, so she's sweeping at this point. So I sat in there and I thought, you know what? I was like, oh, going to talk to Anita. I'm, hey, Anita, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. How how long you been doing this? Oh, you know, been here over about a dozen years. And we, we're just talking, just hearing a little bit about her life. I was like, man, I was like, Ilmfuge has been coming here. I was like, I came as a youth years and years ago. I was like, in fact, she's like, yeah, they've been doing it probably about as long as I have. And we laugh. And I was like, do you ever get tired of it? And she's like, no, she's like the joy of these kids, um, seeing their smiles and seeing these kids, she was like, it keeps me young. And, and she's older, probably 60s or so. And 
um, I was like, yeah, I was like, I can see that. She's like, I, I just love them. And I said, Anita, let me ask you something. I said, you've been doing this, you said roughly a dozen years. And I was like, this, we're actually on a Christian university. Um, I was like, what, if you, if you don't mind me asking, I was like, what, um, and you work in here. I was like, how many times has, I was like, you know why we're here. And she's like, oh, I know. And I was like, how many times just in you being here during this summer, during that eight week period for Mission Fuge, as, as someone shared the gospel with you? She said, never. I said, I'm, I said, I'm sorry. I was like, never. She said, not a one. I said, Anita, eight weeks, hundreds and thousands of people, youth, adults, pass you by and not one of them has shared the gospel with you. The whole point why we're here to share the gospel, you're the easiest person to share it with because you're here coming to us. No one sharing the gospel? She said, no, not a one. I said, well, since you haven't heard the gospel, let me let me give it to you. Well, I give it to her. And again, I'm not making this video like, mm, I gave her the gospel. But it's just the mentality. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Hundreds of thousands of people pass by her, pass by him, pass by people because maybe they're not at our target mission field. Like maybe, maybe they're just beyond the homeless person. Yeah, we're going to the park, but anyone along the way, you know, that's not our responsibility. Someone else to get that or, well, I'm going to the park, so that's good enough for me. Our mentality is, 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 is lost. And when I say our, I mean myself included because it's so easy to get focused and narrow-minded and have this tunnel vision of, you know, well, here, I'm going to go do this. But in, 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 in doing that, I just keep this focus. And so if anyone out here outside this tunnel is in need of, of Jesus or the gospel or of love or anything, it's it's almost, almost forbidden um, for some not... To, to go out, well, you know, I see you're struggling. I, I love you. Jesus loves you. Um, but I got the I got to go here. And so I want to encourage you guys. So it convicted me because this is like the third day in. I, this happens. I have this conversation with her. And I'm thinking all these years of going to Mission Fuge, I never once thought about witnessing or talking even to the people that are serving us food. What is wrong with me? And, and and so again, to this day, I mean, I, I work in, in, in public and business world and all these people pass by me day in, day out. And honestly, I'm very vulnerable right now. I can tell you that I don't talk about Jesus as much as I should, whether that be fears, whether that be being ashamed. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. But this has just been on my heart the past couple of nights because I think back to Anita and I think with with like the airplane going down recently, I think all those people going to celebrate the new year and going to celebrate and be with friends and family, like what if that's like an Anita? Like what if it's those people that just get passed and passed and don't hear the word of God because of silly fears or because we have our mindset like this? What about them? And we have these opportunities. We need to take advantage of them. And so Guys, I just, I come to you as, as a sinner. I come to you broken. I come to you as someone who hasn't shared their faith like they should, as encouragement that, that as God as continues to work in me and sanctify me and chisel away at my imperfections to draw me close, closer to him, that we just have this mentality that every soul matters and that what they say, two people die roughly every second, two people die and you're thinking, well, why why didn't I just share the gospel? Because there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you guys with that as I'm encouraged um, that we just need to do more. We can do more. Um, we need to worry less about popularity from the world and more about eternally where people are going to go and less about how cool we look. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. God bless.